Hello everyone, Ron again, and in this video, we're going to talk about Neoverb and Nectar 3, Neutron 4, and how these things come together to make a cohesive whole so that you can mix a vocal into a track, specifically a two track in this case. And for anyone who does not know, a two track is essentially what it is, is just when you have like a beat, you know, it's called a two track because left and right channel, or I guess possibly mid inside, you know, I think that still applies with mid inside. It makes sense because there are still two tracks, but it's basically when you have a complete beat, like a product or a song, but you don't have the individual mix elements. So you have to be able to mix a vocal into a track such as that while it's in that state and we're going to pretend that this vocal that i have for the sake of example matches this track because of cpu purposes <laughs> all right so the reason we're going to look at neoverb first is that obviously you have to make everything sound like it is in the same space now again i'm just going over the workflow so this is the way that I will go about doing this, but it would take more time than what you're going to see in this video because I would take days and, you know, possibly sometimes weeks, given the amount of time that I have at my disposal to come back to a certain song and decide whether I like it, to card test it, to see what it sounds like coming out of a phone, maybe different speakers. So you should keep all of that in mind just because I'm doing this quickly. And to be honest with you, it may not even sound optimal. The purpose of this is not to sound optimal. The purpose of this is to show you the workflow. All right, so with Neoverb being open, you're gonna notice that there are three types of reverb. One is reflections, which are short reverbs or reverberations. This one right here, which I can't see because of the light that's on me, <laughs> is the room reverb basically and the hall reverb is one that is like a hall like in a really big space so neoverb blends the three together so you can have a unique reverb texture but it also has a pre-eq and a reverb eq meaning that you can filter out what sounds are coming in so you see down here you have the frequencies so what we're going to do is the Abbey Road trick and you can look at my reverb shorts to see more about the Abbey Road trick and how to create shimmer and reverb using that. But this is what we're going to do. So when I'm processing this vocal, I don't necessarily want every frequency to be a part of the reverb because the higher frequencies they might be too bright and the lower frequencies might become muddy. So let's take a listen to what it sounds like. So along this, usually, because I will have a ton of mixed elements, you know, even though this is a two track, but I will have a bunch of mixed elements if it was in the mix. So I would be doing the reverb first. And it's also easier to explain this way, but let's listen to what it sounds like. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. So, this is the mix knob. Now it's actually 100% wet. Funny enough, I forgot to do that before. On the vocal, I put Fruity Send so we can turn it off and hear the reverb in isolation. 
So let's hear this now. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Okay. I like that. It sounds intelligible to me. So let's add this back in. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Okay, so now the goal of this was to make the vocal sound like it's a little bit further away. And normally I would mix with more than one reverb, but for this purpose, I'm just going to use this one. I will have like different channels with different reverbs, and I would be combining them together along with delay as well. But this is to keep this simple. And I would lower the reverb fader because I don't necessarily want you to hear every reverb. I just want you to feel some of them. But you get what I'm saying. The point is that this is where Neoverb fits in the isotope workflow. Using it on a vocal or using it on whatever makes element, but in this case, just a vocal, because there's only actually two elements. <laughs> now, the next thing that we want to consider is how are we going to seat this vocal into this track? So this is where the relationship between Neutron 4 and Neoverb come into play. Considering this masking feature could also show you if Neoverb is masking something, we're not going to do it for the purpose of CPU because it actually makes the CPU go crazy. <laughs> but Neoverb is a little bit CPU intensive. That's the reason why. And so is Nectar. But I only have the equalizer here because that's really all you need. So I labeled this vocal in Nectar as the night before Christmas. And here's another example of how the the plugins communicate with each other. If I go here, this is the name of it. Over here in FL Studio, it says Nectar 3, but inside of Nectar, you can change the name so you know what track it is. And then you can detect it here. And when I play it, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature. When I play it, I'm able to see where one track is masking the other. And that is the key to making the vocal stand in front of all the other mix elements. Because when you hear something that is closer to you, you're going to hear most of the frequencies. So you're not just going to hear the frequencies that are down here, but you're going to hear the ones that are up here too. So if I was to low pass something, and I mentioned this in my series talking about reverb, but if I was to low pass something and put reverb on it, then it would sound like it's further away. The reason is because lower frequencies are bigger, so they survive air pressure more. And the higher frequencies, being faster and smaller, they won't necessarily reach you. So that is why noises that are lower go further, is because of the air pressure. Anyway. So the point is that when the vocal is louder, because something that's closer to you is going to be louder too, when it's up front, it's going to sound like it's really loud and you're going to hear all of the frequencies. But if something is masking it, then our brain will perceive that that thing is in front of it or is closer to it in proximity. So that is the reason why you need to unmask the vocal. And for the record, there are two ways that you could unmask anything using Neutron 4.
Neutron 4 has the unmask module. And it's really good. But you can see the CPU. So I'm not going to use that one for this video. If I was not recording a video, then I might consider it because it is extremely transparent and it's a lot easier. You can control, like, you can say, you could choose the frequency range that you want it to unmask in, sort of like this, but it won't go outside of it. It's just much easier. Maybe I'll look at it in a separate video. But for the purpose of this video, we can use Neutron 4 Equalizer. So the first thing that you want to do is to sidechain this to the track where the equalizer is at. And this is sidechain to Neoverb, so I need to actually sidechain it to this too. In FL Studio, we're going to click this, go here, go to Processing, turn this on, find it. So that is the vocal that we want to unmask. Now, if I were to play this, I would be able to see, well, I would be able to sidechain these notes to that vocal as it comes in. And because of the unmasking feature, I'm going to use that to unmask the vocal and the beat so that the vocal stands in front and it is dominant. Now, I want to add here that part of the purpose of additive EQ is to bring out the areas of the vocal that you want to stand out in the mix. So you don't just add haphazardly. I mean, you add for the sake of making it sound better, but you also can use additive EQ for the sake of clarity. Because let's say in this area, my voice is the most intelligible, then that is where I want it to stand out. And at the same time, that's partially where I want to dug the mix, maybe. But it depends on the mix and what else is in the mix. Because sometimes your vocal is what brings the tonal balance to the mix. So there's not a lot of information in the same area. And it can work heavily in your favor. All right. So with that being said, this is an example of one that I actually did not do yet. <laughs> in all the other videos, I was processing some of it in advance, but in this one, I decided not to. So I've got all of these things. I have the vocal and the beat routed to this fake master bus. Neoverb is here routed to the same thing. So I'm going to do a quick example of what I would do to go about mixing a vocal into a two track using the isotope workflow. So here we go. Keep in mind, it's kind of amusing, but this vocal probably doesn't match this song because the song is not intended for vocals. It's intended to help you relax. But anyway, let's get into it. Before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Okay, this might be easier to see what it turned off. Due to the video, 
Neutron 4 is making it lag a little bit visually. All right. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Okay, let's go here. All right, it was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. So, to me, it sounds like something strange is going on where. One of these is lower than the other. Like the second one is lower than the first one. So what I'm gonna do is go to the first one. Now, what I would wanna do also is I would want to adjust the volume of the vocal so that it still is loud enough to be perceived as sitting in front of it. Now there's reverb on it, so it's not gonna be dry. Something that is dry and has no reverb would be like it's directly in front of you because of the lack of reverb. Reverb makes things sound far away. So this has a little bit, so it'll sound close, but not too close. And it's loud for the same reason. And now it is unmasking over here. So let's check this out. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was so it's kind of subtle, but I hope that you can hear that as I bypass it, that it's harder to hear the clarity in the vocal. And when I unbypass it, the vocal becomes easier to hear. So let's listen to it again with no EQ. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house. Now let's add it back in. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creep. So all I did was I looked at where the areas are masking here predominantly, and probably I could do more down here because this looks like it's just, it's a little crazy. It's going from here to here. This is where the vocal is masking with the song. And these are all set to external. So the vocal is making them duck. And what I like about this is you can make them duck in different areas, different amounts. Because over here, it's not masking as often. So I don't necessarily want that to duck so much. Up here, my voice has intelligibility. <laughs> Up here, my voice has intelligibility. And that's evidenced by the choice in EQ that I made. So that is why I'm bringing this down because I want that to be heard. I could possibly do something that's the same over here. And well, it has a high pass cause it's context aware, but I would want it to add high shelf. I could make a dynamic high shelf. So the beat would duck in this area, but I feel like that would be detrimental. So I'm gonna do a little bit more and just see what else, you know, what else I can gain from it. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. 
It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas. Now something else to try is to see how much I wanted to stand out in the mix. So I could even turn this up if I wanted it to sound closer and I could turn the reverb down. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. It was the night before Christmas and all through the house, not a creature was stirring. So you can see by varying the levels of the dry vocal versus the reverb, I can make it sound closer or farther away. And I would do this to make it sit correctly in the mix. So between Nectar preparing the vocal, Neoverb adding reverb to it, Neutron 4 unmasking the vocal from the track to make it stand in front of the track. This is the workflow that one would use to mix a vocal into a two track. And the final thing that I would do personally is I would take something like Maximus or in the isotope workflow, it will be ozone because it has the dynamics module, but a multiband compressor. And then you might want to glue it together because there could be points where the vocal is too loud and you don't want to just ride the fader. You want to compress it so that it will have a consistent volume relative to everything else in that specific area. This is the relationship between them. And this is the workflow that one would use. So in the last video, we use Melodyne, hypothetically, to pitch correct the vocal. Then we use Nectar 3 to make it sound better and to prepare it with additive EQ to be mixed into the track by making it more intelligible. And in this video, we use Neoverb so that the vocal would not be dry so we could push it back into the mix because of how reverberations work and how we perceive sound. And then we use Neutron 4 to unmask the vocal against the track so that while pushing the vocal back, it still sounds like it's in front of the track, depending on the amount of volume that I use. And if I was to take it a step further, then I would have gone here and I would have used Ozone 10 Dynamics and I would have compressed it to make sure that it is a consistent volume relative to everything else because that would probably be my final step, but I would do it in the mastering phase. So with that being said, that is the isotope workflow. And that is how you mix a vocal into a two track in one video, because I got two requests that I wanted to cover at the same time. So in the next video, that's what I'll be showing. It'll be the conclusion of the entire workflow without including RX in it, because if I do RX, it'll be in a separate video. And maybe I'll describe how you use it beforehand, and maybe I'll describe how you use it after the mastering process. But if this video helped you out, like, comment, and subscribe. As I was saying, check out the other videos in the series, because I believe that this will be helpful to a lot of people. Share it if it helped you. And regardless of what you do, have an awesome day. Peace.